What is up XR developers? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this awesome destructible effect in Mixed Reality. This tutorial will show you all the steps to reproduce this effect using Unity and the Meta SDK. So I hope that you're ready. As always, the complete source code is available on my Patreon, but very important. This is the last week where you can access every exclusive content that I will post on Patreon in 2025 for half the price. So don't wait any longer. And if you want to treat yourself and support the channel, you can simply enter the code 2025 on the annual VR Addict tier to get a huge discount. So hope you guys will enjoy the new tutorial. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, I'm inside a new uh, Unity project. I've already downloaded, as you can see, if I go to Package Manager, I've downloaded already the Meta All-in-One XR SDK. By the way, what's very important is to have a version above 71, which contains the destructible mesh component that we will be using inside this tutorial. And as you can see, this is my first tutorial using Unity 6. So yeah, this is kind of cool. But anyway, now let's try to build our awesome destructible mesh system. So because the scene is empty, I'm going to create a very simple VR setup with path through and the scene model. And to do so, we can go to meta tools, then building blocks. And here I will be able to use the building blocks to quickly set up my project. There you go. For example, we want a camera rig, so I'm going to drag it over there. So the camera rig is the VR camera. And as you can see, these building blocks will already set it up perfectly. Then we want path through, which is to be able to see our surrounding. And finally, the last thing that we want is, let me find it down below, it is here, the effect mesh. So there we go, we can drag it over there and now everything is inside. We can close here the building blocks. And so here the effect mesh will use the scene model that the player will do and will spawn with this data some object. Now, as you can see on the effect mesh labels, now it seems that everything is enabled here, which means that it will spawn something for all of these elements. Now, in my case, I wanted to first set it to nothing and then to set it to global mesh. Now, the global mesh is not a particular furniture or element in your scene model, but it's the complete mesh that was found by your headset. Now, anyway, now that it is done, let's see how this looks by clicking on play. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, everything is working. VR is enabled. And I can see the global mesh here that has been set up by the effect mesh. Now, of course, everything is blue right now, which doesn't allow us to really understand what's going on. But if we click here on wireframe, you can have a better look at how everything is looking. And this is actually the complete scene mesh of my room where you can see here my desk. Now, anyway, now that we can spawn the global mesh, the issue with it is that, of course, this mesh is not destructible because if we click on it, there you go. As you can see, this mesh is only one object. So it means that we won't be able to destroy part of it but that's where the destructible mesh saves the day so let me leave play mode there you go and now in our case i'm going to disable here the effect mesh but instead we are going to search on the project folder for destructible oh and make sure here on the search to search in all and there you go you should see here the destructible mesh prefab that we can drag over there now let me recenter its position to 0, 0, 0. And now let's simply click on play to find out how this is looking. Oh, okay, here you go. So as you can see, the destructible mesh will also generate a mesh with your complete scene surrounding. Now, by the way, you can already see that it's using red material and not a blue one like before. But anyway, the big difference with the destructible mesh compared to the effect mesh is that, as you can see, if I click on the mesh, the mesh has been separated in different segments. And that's what really this destructible mesh is all about. And this is also the thing that we will be able to use to create our destruction effect. Now, anyway, before continuing, as you can see on the destructible global mesh spoiler, we have some components. We've already talked about the global mesh material, which will be the material assigned on the mesh. And we have uh, three settings over there, which will allow us to control how many segments we will have. So for example, in our case, if we go to destructible global mesh over there, we have 91 segments. And if 
we instead double the point per unit X and Y, we can clear the spawn mesh and spawn a new one with this button. And this time, as you can see, we have 147 segments. So yeah, you can use these different settings if you want to get more chunk. But of course, keep in mind that if you have more segment, it means that your optimization will be a bit less good. Okay, and now that we can see how we can customize the number of segments that we have with the three settings, there is another setting which is super cool, which is here, the reserve space. So if we enable it, as you can see right now, it is set to minus one and minus one. So if we set it to dot one and dot one, and that we first clear our mesh and respawn it. As you can see, what this parameter does is that now it has reserved a certain space on our mesh which is not a destructible mesh segment, but is now part of another game object called reserved mesh segment, which is super useful because as you guessed it, we can actually use this reserved mesh segment for some particular stuff that we want, for example, to not be able to destroy the ground or here the ceiling, but only the walls. Now, anyway, before we leave play mode and apply these settings, the thing that I also want to do is that, of course, if we looked at all these mesh, these are only meshes that have visuals, but they do not have any colliders. So let's see how we can get access and customize these different segments. Okay, so let's leave play mode. Let's go back here, set the point per axis to 44. And here we can set the max point count to 512. Now let's see how we can add some mesh colliders to all of these segments. And I'm going to simply click on add component on the destructible mesh prefab. And I'm going to name this one destructible global mesh manager. There you go. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is, of course, access the MR utility kit by writing using meta.xr.mr utility kit. There you go. Now that we access this namespace, we can create a reference to the public destructible global mesh spawner, which we can call mesh spawner. There you go. And now if I go on the uh, start function, as you can see, if I do mesh spawner dot on destructible mesh created. This is an event. So this means that we can now link a function to this event that will be called automatically when we have created the destructible mesh. So for example, I'm going to create a new function called public void setup destructible components. There you go. And actually this function needs to have as a parameter a destructible mesh component called component. And now we can simply call this function with dot add listener setup destructible component. And there you go. Now this function will be called every time that the destructible mesh is created. But of course, what do we want to do? So the first thing is to get all of the different segments, which we can do by first writing at the top using system.collection.generic. Now that we have this namespace, what we can do is have a list of game object that I will call segments with an S and do new list of game objects. And there we go. Now we can populate this segment list simply by doing component dot get destructible mesh segments. And then, and then we can just give as a parameter our new segment list. There we go. And this will populate this list with all of these segments that are being created with the destructible mesh. So now we can do for each var item in segments and then for each segment what we can do is item dot add component mesh colliders beautiful there you go so it is as simple as this now let's find out if this works by saving our script and going back to unity okay so don't forget now to assign here the distributable global mesh spawner on the mesh spawner beautiful and now if i click on play Ta-da! As you can see, if I click on any chunk, you can see that I have a mesh collider that has been generated from the mesh. So that's awesome. And this is what we can use to actually destroy one of the chunk. So let's see how we can try to destroy one mesh segment and be able to call this function when we shoot on one element. Okay, so let's find out how we can now destroy one particular segment. And it is very simple. What we can simply do is create a new public void function called destroy mesh segment. There you go, which will take as a parameter a segment. And now in the case that you've actually used the reserved segment, what we want to do is to check if the segment that you are trying to destroy is not 
the reserved uh, segment from the ceiling or the bottom from the ceiling or the floor so actually what i'm going to do is turn here this game object list as a global parameter so let me cut and paste it above and we can set it to private there we go this means that now this list will be seen by the old script and now what i'm going to do is write segment with an s that contains segment without an s Okay, so now that we've checked that the segment that we are trying to destroy is part of our destructible mesh segment, what we can do is check that it is not a reserved segment. And to do so, I'm going to add at the top another private global reference called destructible mesh component, which I will call current component. Beautiful. And what we can do is reference this parameter over there with current component equals component. And now with this, we can simply check that current component that reserved segment is different than the segment. Beautiful. Okay, and if it's the case, we can simply call our current component that destroy segment and call here our segment object. Okay, here we go. So now we have made a function that can destroy a certain segment. But the big question is, how can we trigger it? And so I have a solution for you. So if we save and go back to Unity, as you can see in my project, I have here this folder called Velum Ray Gun. And inside we can see here this prefab, which is a beautiful ray gun that is already set up with the ray gun script. And as you guessed it, this script will allow us to shoot some ray with the ray gun. So I've actually made this ray gun inside the first episode of my tutorial on how to make a mixed reality game. I strongly encourage you to go watch it. But of course, if you don't have the time, you will be able to find the uh, Unity package to download this prefab in the description file below. And now in my case, what I'm going to do is simply use this gun to destroy one mesh. So I'm going to simply drag it as a child of the right end. There we go. We can see it in our scene right now. And now in, inside my destructible mesh, I'm going to reopen the script. And if I do public ray gun, ray gun, there we go. As you can see, if I call ray gun, I have three events that I can link some function to. I have on shoot, on shoot and hit, and on shoot and miss. And so what we can do is call the on shoot and hit and do add listener and simply add or destroy mesh segment over there. And there we go, it is as simple as this. We can save, go back to Unity, and we can simply now assign this Reagan over there. And with this logic, we should be able to destroy one segment of the destructible mesh when the Reagan found something. So let's find out how this looks by simply clicking on play. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, the ray gun is looking nice. And if I point it in a certain direction and that I press on the right trigger button, as you can see, it works. I was able to destroy this mesh, which is awesome. And let's find out how everything else works. I think it is self-explanatory. This just feels awesome. But of course, I think that we can make it better because right now, as you can see, we can shoot and we will simply remove the redness of the scene model. But of course, what would be great is to have the same effect as the first encounter XR game, where if I shoot on the scene model, I can see something behind it that just reveals. So let me show you how we can do this. So for the explanation, so if this is you, the path through is like this uh, big circle around the player that shows what the camera sees. And then we have the global mesh that is around the player. And so if we want to create the same effect as the first encounters, the technique is actually to make the material of the global mesh show the path through and then and then put a 3D environment behind the destructible mesh so that, for example, if we destroy part of the effect mesh, what the player will see is here the beautiful environment that is behind it. So to sum up, we have the path through, then we have the global mesh, and finally, between the global mesh and the path through, we have a 3D environment. So that's how we can create this effect. Okay, so let me go back to Unity. 
So the path through is already surrounding our player, even if we cannot see it. And now on the destructible mesh, we can see that we have here this global mesh material. And remember, we want to replace it with a material that will actually show the path through instead. And this material, we can make it by right clicking, going to create, and then create a material. We can call it path through in front, beautiful. And now I'm going to search for the selective path through shader which is a shader that will actually show the path through on this material and the last thing that we want to do is set here the blend color from reverse to subtract there we go now everything is set up what we can do is simply drag here the path through in front on the global mesh material so that as you can see if i click on play there you go, as you can see here, all of the destructible mesh have the path through in front material, which is showing the path through directly on the mesh. So we've done the path through, which is behind. We have the global mesh that shows a path through in front. And what's left is to use a 3D environment between. So let me leave play mode. And for the environment, I'm going to be very, very, very simple. I'm going to create a 3D sphere. As you can see, we can recenter it to 0, 0, 0 and set the scale to 100 on all axis. Then I'm going to remove here the sphere collider. There you go. And in my case, as you can see, I have a beautiful 360 Milky Way image that I can simply drag on the sphere, which will actually automatically create a material that contains here as a texture, the 360 Milky Way texture. Now, in my case, I want it to be not lit. So I'm going to select the shader to be universal unlit. And then I'm going to set the render face to set it to back so that it will show the 360 image from the inside and not from the outside. And look at this, it looks really, really great. Now, anyway, everything is done. We have all three elements that are being created, which means that now if we destroy part of our global mesh, it should show the 3D environment behind. So of course, only one way to find out and it is to build and run our application to the MetaQuest. Okay, and here you go guys, it is time to finally test what we have with here or Regan. As you can see, I have the path through surrounding me, and now if I try to shoot it, look at what's going on. I can now see a beautiful Milky Way behind the environment, and with this effect, I can easily destroy all of the global mesh. It looks awesome. And there you go guys, this is the final result. Look at how cool this is. I really think that with this destructible setup and this awesome ray gun that we made in the tutorial series on how to make an XR game, it turns out so well. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. As always, a big shout out to my Patreon for supporting my work and making it possible for me to make these tutorials. And remember, this is the last week where you can access every exclusive content that I will post in 2025 on Patreon for half the price. So don't wait any longer and simply enter the code 2025 on the annual VR addict tier to get a huge discount. Thank you for watching and see you very very soon. Bye bye!